This is Roy Cannon. Today I'm taking a look at the War Machine Hero Pack for Marvel Champions. Let's get into it. All right, let's take a look at War Machine here. So, Rhodey, James Rhodes, three recovery here. Action, choose a War Machine card in your discard pile and shuffle it into your deck. So awesome, able to get some of your War Machine cards back there. Then Force Response, after you change to this form, discard each ammo token counter from your identity. Ammo tokens, what does that do? Well, let's see here. War Machine he is a one thwart, two attack, um, two defense. And this is uh, locked and loaded. Response, after you change to this form, place five ammo counters on War Machine. Cool, so uh, this gives you some ammo counters. How can we use these ammo counters, you might ask? So War Machine has all to do with these ammo counters and using those to activate his different upgrades. Let's take a look at a few of those now. Um, upgraded chassis, War Machine, uh, this is a three cross upgrade. It gives him the aerial trait. He responds after you change to hero form, um, exhaust upgrade chassis to give War Machine a tough status card. This card is amazing, especially in solo play, because you can just be like, okay, I'm going to exhaust this and give myself a tough status card, and then I'm going to exhaust it and give myself a tough status card. Really, really awesome. Each time you're changing back to hero form, you're able to get that tough status card for when the villain's going to be attacking you. Um, so really cool card there. Um, then we have Missile Launcher. This is a one-cost upgrade. Um, it is a hero action and attack. Exhaust Missile Upgrade Launcher and remove one ammo counter from War Machine, which we were talking about how you place the ammo counters on him. Um, to deal two damage to an enemy, this attack gains range. Of course, range lets you go through um, retaliate and things like that without taking the damage. So cool, a way to do damage with those ammo counters. Then Shoulder Cannon. This is a two-cost upgrade. Exhaust Shoulder Cannon, deal one damage to an enemy. You may remove one ammo counter from War Machine to ready Shoulder Cannon. This is fun because you're able to be like, okay, I'm gonna exhaust Shoulder Cannon, deal one damage. And then exhaust shoulder cannon, deal another damage, and it really feels like you're just being like bing, 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 bing doing that uh, Gatling gun feel there. Um, and this there's also Gauntlet Gun. Um, this is a two cost upgrade. Exhaust Gauntlet Gun to generate a wild resource for War Machine event, and place one ammo counter on War Machine. This helps you to be able to play out the War Machine events. So you get two of those. And um, then we have a support here. Um, that is uh, Munitions Bunker. This is a two cost support. Alter Ego action. Most of these supports are. Um, exhaust Munitions Bunker placed two ammo counters here. Cool, so you can basically put ammo counters on it. Then you can Exhaust Munitions Bunker to move each ammo counter from here to War Machine, being able to activate more of your stuff that needs all of those ammo counters. Scorched Earth this is a three cost event. Remove three ammo counters from War Machine, okay? Then deal three damage to each enemy in play. Awesome, so if there's a bunch of minions out in play, you can just blast everybody for three real quick. You get two of those events in play. Then full auto, this is a two cost event. Remove four ammo counters from War Machine and choose an enemy and deal eight damage to that enemy. This attack gains overkill. Wow, I love it. Um, and the fact that um, Rhodey can shuffle events back into the deck, that seems really cool. Um, yeah, so you'll be able to get these back and play them over and over again. Um, which seems awesome. Dealing that 8 damage seems pretty massive. Then a 1 cost event here, Targeted Strike. Remove 1 ammo counter from War Machine. Basically everything has to do with his ammo counters. Remove 3 threat from a scheme. Removing 3 threat from a scheme for 1 is not too bad. Um, then Repulsor Beam. Um, reminds me of playing Marvel vs. Capcom with Iron Man. Repulsor Beam. Anyway, or maybe it's Repulsor Blast. Something like that. Anyway, 1 cost event. Um, remove 1 ammo counter from War Machine. Deal 4 damage to an enemy. Seems pretty good. Four, four damage for one cost seems pretty awesome. But you do have to remove that ammo counter. Then we do have Iron Man. Speak of Iron Man. Three cost ally, two thwart, one consequential damage, two attack, one consequential damage, three hit points. Then after Iron Man enters play, search your deck and discard pile for a tech upgrade and add it to your hand. Shuffle your deck. That seems awesome. Get those tech upgrades out there. Um, then Captain Marvel. This is a five cost leadership ally, which I should mention that um, War Machine is leadership in the uh, starter deck here. Uh, two cost, um, one consequential damage, three cost, and then two consequential damage on Captain Marvel there if she's attacking. A response after Captain Marvel enters play, discard the top four cards of your deck. If you discarded any 
um, energy um, printed resources deal three damage to the enemy. Um, free damage to an enemy. If you discard more than one of them, you also stun that enemy. Awesome. So you're able to blast them away, especially if you have your deck set up to play a bunch of energy. That'd be really good if you're building a deck that has a lot to do with that. Um, Black Panther here. Um, four cost ally, pretty expensive. He he does uh, two thwart with two consequential damage and two attack with two consequential damage, but four hit points. So ah, that's pretty rough. Um, but you may play the event attached to Black Panther as if they were in your hand. Okay, so what's what's this doing here? A response after Black Panther enters play, choose a leadership blue event in your discard pile and attach it to him face down. So he's able to kind of sneak you a. Um, a leadership event into your from your discard pile back into your hand. That seems pretty cool. Then Falcon, we've seen Falcon before. Two cost, four ally, two two or four cost ally with two thwart, two attack, one consequential damage each. Um, response after Falcon enters play. Move the top three cards of your encounter deck. Each treachery um, looked at this way. Um, you remove one threat from a scheme. The last we've also seen before. He's awesome because he's four a cost ally, um, two thwart. One attack, but two consequential damage on his attack there. Four hit points. Here's the part that I love. Attack, or action. Goliath gets plus four attack until the end of the phase. At the end of the phase, discard Goliath. So he's going to have this one massive attack that's going to do five damage. Um, but the really cool thing is the next card here is an event here that is a leadership event. Comboed with Goliath is really cool. This is a zero cost event. Um, going down swinging, um, discard an ally you control, deal damage to an enemy equal to that ally's printed cost. Well, I guess maybe that wouldn't work. It's the printed cost as opposed to the um, upgraded cost. But you know what I mean. This helps you hit with a uh, ally really hard. So maybe that combo doesn't work quite as well as I thought it did. Um, but you do get three of those. Sneak attack. This is a one cost event. Choose an ally from your hand. This one will work really good with Goliath. And put it in that shares a trait with your identity. Put it, that ally into play. If that ally is still in play at the end of the round, discard it. So you can throw somebody down, attack with them for only one cost instead of paying their full cost. So sneak attack is like, it's a card that was in the Lord of the Rings card game. I think it even had the same name. So that's pretty cool. Um, command Tent. This is a two cost support. Um, it has three command counters on it. You can exhaust command, uh, command team, I mean, and remove one command counter from it to ready an ally. Awesome. So ways to get your allies back out there. That's really cool. And then save the day. A one cost event, discard an ally you control, remove threat from a scheme equal to that ally's printed cost. So um, that allows you to basically put it out there for their printed cost for the actual cost of the ally, being able to throw them at the bad guy basically. Um, and then a cool resource here, innovation, a max one per deck. After you spin this card, heal one damage from an ally you control. Another cool way to heal your allies out. Make the call we've seen tons of times. And then Mockingbird is in the basic deck. Quinn Carrier, there's another one of those. That's awesome. Two against the world. This is the three cost event. Team up with Iron Man and War Machine. Max one per deck. Search your deck for a tech upgrade. Put it into play and then shuffle your deck. I'm ready, Iron Man and War Machine. So you can have that cool classic team up of Iron Man and War Machine. Then of course we have Strength, Genius, Energy, and then uh, the obligation here, equipment malfunction. We, I don't like to talk about these too much because I like these to kind of be a little bit of surprises, but you do have the living laser as your bad guy and all of his stuff as well. Lots of laser strikes to mess you up. And then of course the card that you start with and then the extra cards that can be kind of added in. All is one, this is a um, alliance. This is a exhaust, hero action exhaust an Avengers character and a guardian character. Deal X damage to an enemy where X is the combined attack of those characters. This attack gains overkill. So you're kind of teaming up together. You get five of these if you have a mixed team deck. Um, this is a one cost support for justice. If you're playing with justice, uh, vigilante training, max two per deck, exhaust this card and remove one training counter from it. Choose a justice yellow event in your discard pile and shuffle it into your deck. I think it's funny that they have like the yellow on there. I guess I always end up saying like red, green, yellow, you know, but that's kind of funny that they also have it because obviously the card says justice at the bottom of it anyway. Okay, event, uh, stand together, four cost. Um, this is another alliance card. Um, 
when a friendly character would take any amount of damage from an attack, exhaust an Avenger character and a Guardian character, prevent all of the damage, um, deal that much damage to the attacking enemy. So if you're having those mixed teams of Avengers and Guardians, you can work together to be able to take stuff out. And then sidearm attached to an ally max one per ally attached to ally gets plus one attack and this and gains range so way to boost up some of your allies there to give them a little sidearm weapon you get three of those and then another two against the world to be able to add into your iron man deck as well so that way both characters can have their stuff so that's basically everything you get in war machine let's look at my thoughts <music> So War Machine is really cool with all of his different ammo counters and all of his cool upgrades that you can basically exhaust to be able to spin those ammo counters and all of his events and stuff kind of utilize these ammo counters. It's kind of interesting that you have this robotic guy that's just blasting things away with all these weapons and it feels very thematic with all the ammo counters and things like that he has. I really enjoy a bunch of stuff in his deck. He's also got the leadership stuff which can kind of like he has cool allies and kind of buff themselves and then be able to spin allies out like get them into play play cheaper with sneak attack and then be able to use them to kind of like throw them at the enemy and things like that. There's a little bit of cool combos within just the leadership stuff in this deck, but War Machine himself as an ally or as a hero is really cool just because the things that he can do with all those counters. Um, when I was playing this out, I played it against several different things. One of them was really cool playing him against Ultron because you can kind of ping a bunch of the different um, drones that were coming out and doing a bunch of small damage to a bunch of different people, having that uh, Gatling gun type weapon is really cool to just kind of like utilize up a bunch of those things flip back down to roadie then flip back up the next round to be able to recharge those ammo counters you're going to be constantly flipping back and forth with the machine which is the thing i like to do in marvel champions anyway it feels interesting as you're going down to draw extra cards coming back up with fresh ammo counters and all these cards that you can blast your opponent away with um, i still really love marvel champions and i think that war machine is probably one of my favorites he's been a lot of fun to play and i love that he has cards that can do a lot of damage um, with like the the full auto like blasting everything away i mean he's a lot of fun i enjoy war machine so definitely if you're into marvel champions and you like the idea of dealing with all the ammo counters and figuring out kind of like another resource that you have to spend as you play the game check out um War Machine, he's going to get an excellent from me. Definitely super fun to play with. I really enjoy it. So, um, yeah. Let me know how you've been enjoying Marvel Champions, what characters you've played, which character you're most excited about getting, um, which scenarios and things or favorite villains do you guys have. Let me know in the comments down below. It's been a lot of fun being here. This has been Roy Kennedy, and I'll see you on the next one. <laughs>